Alrighty guys, we're back for round two. Tried this earlier in the front yard, in the, but that was too far away from my internet connection. So apparently it went, it went out. And so we're gonna do, just gonna start over in the backyard now. Hopefully the rain will um, hold off. So let me, I'm just gonna read again. We're just gonna read it again. So today we're gonna be in 17 through 20. If you were here earlier, I apologize. And let's just jump in. So it says, I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. And so in this passage, the, the writer is, is finishing um, their psalm of praise and um, he's talking about crying out to the Lord and the Lord hearing his prayer and what what really caught my attention this in this passage this morning was verse 18 where he says if I had cherished sin in my heart the Lord would not have listened but God has surely listened and has heard my prayer now the reason that catches my attention is because I think there's a principle about it that is very helpful for us when it comes to the, the posture of our hearts when we uh, go to the Lord in prayer. For the ancient, for the Jewish people and for the people of Israel, one of the fundamental um, ways that they related to God, well, the way that they related to God was often through rules and rituals. And so their understanding of the relationship was, with God was... I can't go to God, God will not listen to me unless I am cleansed of my sins. That there is a, a block because of the sin of our lives um, that gets in the way. And so for, for the Jewish people, the way that they would deal with their sins is they would offer a sacrifice and that sacrifice would atone or it would cover over their sins so that they were free to cry out to, the, to God. Even for them, they, they wouldn't go to God uh, necessarily themselves, but that would often be it would be me mediated through a priest. And so, um, so for them, you you couldn't go to God just um, just without kind of having your ducks in a row and making sure that you were uh, sacrificially cleansed from your sins through a sacrifice of an animal or whatever. Now, you and I, we. We don't have that same issue because you and I, we live on the other side of the cross. Because of what Jesus has done, because, the, because Jesus has offered himself as, a, as the last and ultimate sacrifice, you and I, we are, our sins are, are cleansed, covered over. When God sees us, he doesn't see our sin. He sees what Jesus has done instead. So we're free. We're free to go to God. But at the same time, there is a, a principle from this passage that I think is very helpful because even though you and I are free to go to God, if we are in the midst of living in sin or we have things that get in the way, well, it's going to get in the way of our relationship with God. It, the, the brokenness of our lives, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the rebellion, all of those things will get in the way of our relationship with God. And it's not that God doesn't listen to us. But I honestly believe it stops us from listening to him. That the sin, the like I said, the bitterness, the unforgiveness that perhaps we have for other people, the jealousy, anger, um, all those kinds of things, those things get in the way when it comes to us listening to God. And so for me, I know that for myself, the one thing that I constantly am doing is I'm trying to keep a short list. I constantly try to find myself in that place of confession where I'm uncovering the brokenness of my life and say, God, this is apologizing. Father, I'm so sorry I've broken your heart in this way. I'm sorry that these things get in the way. Please forgive my sins. Please uh, cleanse me of these things. Father, offering these things to God so that um, he can clean it up. And and I think that's kind of the, the posture of this the psalmist's heart this morning is understanding that 
there are things in our lives that can get in the way of our relationship with God. And, and the way that, that God has dealt with those things is, one, he's covered over those things with Jesus. And two, he invites us into a place of intimacy where we can confess our sins, knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and, and knowing that we can live free, open, um, in relationship with him. So that's kind of what jumped out at me this morning. If you find yourself struggling with something, if you find yourself that there's a block because of sin, I, I would just invite you um, just to confess those things to the Lord. Just open your heart in prayer to Him, knowing that you can walk away free. And if it's something that's really hard that you're struggling with, you know, I would I would find someone that you trust and just say, "Hey, pray for me. I'm struggling with this kind of stuff." Because you and I, we weren't created to do this alone. We were created to live this this live out our faith with people. And so I find I found that very important. But we need people along along with us in the journey. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys today. Sorry for the technical difficulties earlier. Today is Thursday, so it's thankful Thursday. And I'm trying to speak over top of the sirens if you can hear them in the background. And so uh, be thankful today. Be thankful for the blessings that you have. Um, and yeah, so blessings to you guys. Hope you have a great day. And we'll catch you tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye.